Hi, and welcome to another video update about the Belmont Middle and High School Building Project. I'm Diane Miller, and I'm here today with Tom Caputo, another building committee member, and of course our chair, Bill Avalo. One of the questions that we get asked about a lot is about project costs, and specifically, how are we as a building committee um, being good stewards of the taxpayer dollars? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, Tom, why don't you kick us off with a little bit of a breakdown of the project costs? Be happy to. So this is a $295 million building project. Of that, $80 million is actually covered by a maximum grant that's provided by the state's MSBA. And the MSBA is the Massachusetts School Building Authority, uh, which is a state agency that provides funds to local communities to help them build schools. So with that $80 million, that will offset our $295 million project. So the taxpayers of Belmont approved with the debt exclusion uh, the overall project, which will essentially be a $215 million uh, taxpayer contribution to fund the building project. And we have to keep reminding our taxpayers that that was a maximum grant from the state. So what that means is that that's the maximum that they would contribute, but the vote by the taxpayers in 2018 and by town meeting member was to fund the full project because that's the legal part of it, offset by that maximum grant. We know uh, as of last year that the state uh, made an adjustment to that of about a, a one and a half percent mm -hmm. uh, as what they call an evaluation of eligible and ineligible costs mm -hmm. as they continue to evaluate this project. Not completely surprising to us and our professionals, our professional team here continually looks at all the project costs to make sure we're doing our best to ensure that we get the best value for the taxpayers, meaning we get as much of that $80 million as possible. Yes. Right, and so obviously the high school is complete and open and operational. We are still under construction on the middle school side of the project. And so we're gonna talk specifically about construction costs and the fact that changes are inevitable, right? Mm -hmm. During construction, things come up. Um, so we're a team of appointed volunteers. So how do we manage all of this money? So we, we have a procedure of product, standard protocols to evaluate the validity of a change and then how the costs are, are allocated. And we're, we're not necessarily all experts in the field, the committee. Uh, so early on in our committee uh, processes during construction, we actually got educated by our professional team on what that process uh, entails. And we continue to rely on them to ensure that we have the best value. In other words, the cost is reasonable for the change and uh, you know, maybe things had to be adjusted to ensure that the costs are aligning with the change. And we have our team, right? Right, exactly. We, so we have a team of experts, which includes our architects, our construction professionals. We also have a group called an owner's project manager, an OPM, mm -hmm. uh, which brings uh, the project management expertise and has deep experience in a lot of uh, similar building projects. Uh, we also complement that with expertise from the town. So we've got members of the town staff who also understand the buildings, understand how to operate the buildings, and know what things cost. Combination of those folks all allow us to be confident as a committee who aren't necessarily as knowledgeable that the costs and the changes that come through are in fact industry standard and, and appropriate. Wonderful. So let's talk about what some of these changes might be. What types of things types have, of have we encountered or <laughs> might we encounter on a project of this size and this complexity? So uh, we could have changes that the owner requests. In other words, maybe an, a, 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 a change to a door configuration or something. But we've kept those to a minimum for obvious reasons. But there could be inspectional changes when the building inspector comes through the building and, and they have to add a few more um, exit signs or things like that. Uh, there could be unforeseen conditions, which has really been our biggest issue. We'll say that COVID was an unforeseen condition, and <laughs> we won't talk one. about that. We've already talked about We've COVID. We've talked about right? that, right? Uh, but there could be things like uh, our site had some soil issues that were unforeseen. When we were doing demo, we found some additional, we knew there was asbestos, even more additional areas. Those are unforeseen conditions. And then there's still the standard of care that our design team 
they're not perfect. No one's perfect. So there are mistakes sometimes that are made. Our team has done a very good job of not making a tremendous amount, but those are, those are errors and omissions, mm -hmm. and, um, and we have to pay for those as well. So those are the types of changes that come out, and they have a cost event associated with them that, that uh, then has a whole history of tracking okay. through. So in terms of the meat of this conversation, how we navigate through this process, it gets a little bit complicated, I think, hence the conversation that we are having to try to sort of uh, explain that a little bit. So yeah, let's so, talk uh, about the process. We got to do this together, right? Uh, this is so we start with that, the type of event that could incur cost. And with that is an assignment of a cost event. And that could be a zero cost, right? Some of them are actually credits, mm -hmm. okay? Cost goes up and down. Um, as soon as, uh, so, so once there's a cost associated with a cost event, then there's a, a pending uh, revision that's, that's uh, established. And these are all different in tabulated form. They're, they're tracked. And then once it's submitted for review by the team, all assembled with the backup documents, it's called um, a, a project change order. And we acronym that as a PCO, PCO. if you remember, mm -hmm. right? And, and those, there's multiple PCOs. Uh, once a month, uh, we get a summary of all the PCOs that uh, finally are ready for approval. So the PCOs can live, we started uh, around for up to a year, mm -hmm. being batted around or evaluated different ways or sent back to the subcontractors for repricing. And that's what our team does to make sure the value there is appropriate for this project. Once a month we approve that PCO and that's a contract change. A PC, I should say all the PCOs right. lumped into a PCCO, project uh, cost change order. And, and that's what gets uh, put in front of the committee for discussion, mm -hmm. eventual approval, and then the, the contract with the, the construction managers change for that value. So it's a, it's a long process. Those are all uh, tabulated, right? We have pages and pages of that. So I think it's transparent. You yeah, yeah, and we put all of it on the website too, which is, which is great. So if anyone from the community wants to see it, all the information that is captured in those change orders are actually is made available. We've added lists of acronyms because mm -hmm. I know that's you know there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them <laughs> out there. Uh, we've got flow charts now that try to explain the process. So the goal is to try as much as possible uh, to demystify it so that folks understand what it is. It's a pretty complex process, but at the end of the day, uh, we're trying to be as transparent and provide as much information to the community and to the committee as possible. So once this cost event makes it through this long process, it becomes an approved PCCO, then it's a question of how do we pay for it? Where does that money come from? And, and I think, uh, and I could understand this, when folks hear about a cost change, they think it's a taxpayer cost change, right? We figured a lot about that. Right However, that. these cost changes that we said earlier are all tracked, mm -hmm. and we have them in a summary. We know about them, and and so even though we're approving it and it's changing the contract cost with the contractor, it's still within our budget of two hundred ninety-five million because it fits within the contingency allocation that we have for changes. That we set up in 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. We had contingencies for these types of things. No project has, <laughs> you must know this, so you've done a bathroom project in your house, right? right? So, so we established contingencies to cover these changes. That's where the money's drawn from. And eventually, uh, you know, we, we keep a record of this. We, we track it. And what we've seen, like you said earlier, is worse for the past eight, nine months now, We've been holding through to to, uh, to what we anticipated as being cost to the project, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I want to say that all of these costs don't change the fees to our professionals. They don't make more money simply by approving a change order for us. I they think that's a very important. Yeah, distinction they don't get a percentage make, right? of this, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, the, their fees are are still are, fixed. Are set. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So there's no uh, there's no incentive for them to actually make this project costs more. They actually continue to look for ways to keep better value in for Belmont taxpayers. Yeah. Right. And, and this, it's, it's been good to see over the last year that this has been a concerted focus, I would say, of the committee, right? As we've worked towards the end of the Especially project. since COVID, right, Tom? Especially like, since COVID, oh, we got we all, those all these unanticipated yeah. costs. Right. We, so we started working with our, our professionals to make sure that we were tracking not only the change orders that they 
specifically knew they were dealing with, but also what were they anticipating? And we went through a kind of projected set of what do you think the rest of the project will look like, as well as let's put some placeholders in there for the unknown unknowns. Right? This is Those an official term. The unknown <laughs> unknowns, right? Things where we knew there was a chance that we may discover something mm -hmm. uh, based upon experience. And then we've been working month by month filling those in and you know, putting more rigor around each of those estimates as more information became clear and ultimately continuously tracking the amount of money that we have in that contingency. And the good news is that over the last probably eight or nine months, we've been tracking in the ballpark of about a million dollars left in that contingency. Well, half a million too. I'm sorry, half a million. forgive me actually, it's been more like $500,000, yes. yes. Half a million dollars that we've been tracking consi consistently. And we're feeling increasingly good that we'll end that project uh, not with, with some level of contingency left. So, last question for you guys. Yeah. I am happy to hear and agree that we're, we're tracking um, on schedule with that half a million dollars. What happens if something unexpected, if we have another a big unknown unknown and we don't have enough contingency left? Or, on the other hand, what if we continue in that direction and at the end of the project we have an extra half a million dollars? Where does that money go? Well, I'll take the first one. Okay. Uh, We've gone through a lot of scenarios. We put money in for different unknown unknowns. That could be moved around, but we, we feel pretty confident with, uh, I'd say now nine months left of construction. Uh, and the project, uh, what we have left to pay is about $30 million. So we're doing quite well on, on the exposure that we mm -hmm. see. We're, out of, we're done with all the really difficult things. We're doing finishes in the building now. If you saw a painting, uh, walls, or the, uh, ceilings, that sort of thing. So the unknown unknowns were a challenge early on the project. We were With in the, the ground, we were doing the renovation, mm -hmm. uh, the f phasing, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, so we're in we're good pretty, shape. We're in good shape to okay. have money left over. Wonderful. What so do then, what do we do with it? <laughs> <laughs> the good news. At the end of the day, if there is money left over, it just reduces the burden on the taxpayer. So Wonderful. that money won't get spent, and the taxpayer ultimately uh, will have a, build, a, a building that uh, is completed for Slightly less than Slightly the original less. budget. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you, Bo. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Tom. This Absolutely. has been a great conversation, and thank you for watching. Hopefully this has cleared up some of your questions as well.